right, so this would be the fourth time lunging her. <clears throat> the second time lunging her out in the big arena. So I'm just gonna start by desensitizing her a bit. I was just shaking my rope around, shaking my stick around, making sure she's not anticipating anything. Then I'll point, step, swing, and send her off on the lunging circle. I just wanna pivot or walk a small circle with my belly button and my toes facing her hindquarters. Point and swing and I'm gonna collect twice for the trot. She wants to come in, I'm gonna point swing she thinks about going the other way I have my rope a little long here so I'm just gonna bump on it and tell her to go the opposite way make my rope a bit shorter here so I can control her a bit better slide bend of the way step on her hind quarters swing very good she's really gotten that down now send her the other way her trot I just point and clock and she gets right into a trot now When she starts getting fast like this, I can have her change directions and kind of break that pattern of getting worried and have her just think about something else than just zooming around on the circle. The other hindquarters. I'm, I'm like dusting myself off, but I'm doing all that motion so she dis she gets desensitized. So she was starting to get fast on that circle. I yield her hindquarters, and now this is desensitizing her because she likes to anticipate like she is right now. I'm just gonna yield her. I'll either yield her or I'll bump on the rope um, until she comes back to me. Then I'll start desensitizing her again until she can stand still. When she can stand still for a couple minutes, I'll send her off again. But I really want her to not anticipate. So I'll send her the opposite way she was thinking about going. Just have her do an inside turn and just slide my opposite hand down the uh, rope and wait for her to respond to that pressure, slide my hand down, wait for her to respond to it, help her out with the stick, step toward her opposite shoulder, there she goes. And she's doing really well at the walk and trot here, I just back up and she draws right into me, come forward a bit more. She's doing really well at the walk and trot, but today I'm going to add in the canter, um, and we'll see how she does with that. So I like to give her a lot of time to just stand and face me and rest. There, she's anticipating again when I started moving my rope. That's why I do that. I don't want the anticipation. I want her desensitized, yet responsive. She needs to be balanced at all times. And this is where she learns that. And she tries to go off and just like, nope, let's do something else. And then there, she took a nice deep breath. Just kind of move my stick back and forth a little bit. She gets a little worried, thinks about leaving, but she doesn't, so awesome. So send her off. Send her off nice and gently. Especially with a horse like her who's um, anticipating going off a lot, I don't want to send her off really harshly. There she didn't go, and she didn't yield straight, so I'm going to send her off the opposite way. draw into me and she's doing a really good job of that just drawing off of my body language and not the pull from my rope so give her a moment to just face me and there she's looking away so I'll just move and she brings her attention right back on me perfect desensitizers move my stick move my rope around ducks off the legs like all this stuff means nothing the only thing you need to listen to is when I slowly point my hand up and then cluck. Those are the only cues you need to listen to right now. I'm clucking, swing my stick. I'd like her to go off the trot. There, she felt that rope crush a little bit and was like, oh, should I turn into you? I'm like, no, just keep going. That's why I don't want to get after her. I just want to gently send her back on. I don't want to let her come in either because it's not my idea. Send her off here. I'm trying to get her a canter, so I'm gonna point, I'm gonna um, kiss, and then I'm gonna swing my rope, and off she goes. <laughs> and that's totally normal for a horse, just starting out lunging. Um, all of mine actually have done that. Yeah, that's a better canter. She's pulling a little bit, so I'm gonna 
have her do an inside turn. Whenever she pulls, I do an inside turn, have her stand and face me and go the opposite way. That way she learns quickly that she can't pull on me. Um, if I just continue lunging her and let her pull or bump on her, like she's not gonna learn that. Let's distract her here. She needs to stop anticipating. No, I'm not going anywhere. Just chill out. Quiet. Lots of them will get worried at the camera on the lunge line at first um, and pull. I had Winslow do it too. He did it a lot really bad. So we just want to make sure that they learn from the beginning that they start pulling. Like I pull back and then I make you do it inside turn. And he's like, oh, I should pay attention. She has a much nicer camera right here to the right. That was very nice. I think maybe her um, canter to the left was a little bit, bit faster because she's. I asked her in this right hand corner and she is coming around you know that black and white drum and that's facing the gate so she sped up and kind of pulled toward the gate. So you always got to be aware of where your horse's magnets are. There I'm going into the sensitizer but she was um, had her hip cocked toward me so I wanted to even that up a little bit. But always make sure you know where they are because then I'm, I'm just prepared for it. Like, I know she's gonna pull me toward closer to the gate. I know she's gonna stare off in the direction of her friends. And that's fine, that's what horses do. But at least I know and I'm aware of it and I can counteract that. So I can go to the end of the arena and get off and then tack. And work her more by the gate, just to keep her balanced. And that starts here with the groundwork and then continues on to the under saddle. So I'm just moving my hands around. She's doing a really great job of not anticipating she'd been struggling with for a little bit. She dropped her head down. That was perfect. So I'm going to ask her nice and soft. I just have my uh, my hand nice down my, down my hip, down my leg when I'm not asking her to do anything. You don't want to get in the habit of pointing constantly because then you wear out your cues. Here I'm going to get her speed up and get into a canter. So I'm just going to keep asking. There we go. Too bad. I just let that rope slide through my hands, yield her hindquarters. That was really good. So I'm just gonna let her stand and take a break here. So I didn't get after her too much and really like come in there with the whip and smack her on the butt because um, she has that tendency to be worried. So I just kept that nice gentle pressure and was like, hey, like let's just canter. Um, it's really dependent on your horse. If your horse is much more lazy and just like, nope, don't want to. Then I would go in there and smack him, but she's not like that. So it, it really depends on the horse and it really depends on the day because sometimes they'll be afraid one day and be really lazy the next. So it's just all about reading the horse for that particular time. We go the opposite way that she's thinking about going. I've really seen a difference in her improvement in lunging compared to the horses I've had in the past. Um, there she kind of rolled into a nice little canter all by herself. Um, she's getting better every time she canters. She gets a little bit, a little bit calmer, like with her striding. Her legs don't go quite as fast. There she was pulling, so I'll have her do an inside turn here. Um, but I just saw a lot of like with Winslow and the storm, they would be on the lunge line. Oh, she decides she wanted to go the other way. So I correct her a bump and keep asking until she goes the correct way. But with them, I saw a lot of um, bad lunging habits that it took a long time to break. Especially like with Winslow, he just could not counter on that lunge line for a really long time. And with her, I feel like she's learning so much faster just because not a lot has been done with her. Sure. So I can see why um, people would like to start their own horses because it is... A lot easier to some extent, especially with the lunging, she doesn't have all that baggage. Well. So I'm really happy with that. She's learning so much faster. Have her go off. I just point slowly all the way up so she that's her first cue on my clock, and then I'm gonna use my stick. Let her go up into a trot all by herself. She's not a hurried trot. 
getting a little hurry now, but it wasn't too bad. Draw her into me. To pull on the halter a little bit here. And send her off. This is a 12 foot lunge line, so I'm going to start on the shorter one just because for me, I feel like the longer, like 24 foot lunge line is just too much rope for me. Um, and they can comfortably canter on this. I just let it slide through my hand. Um, I will eventually move it up to a longer one, but for me in the beginning, I just like this length. A normal, like, eight or nine foot lead rope is not going to work. So. There she's pulling, so I'm gonna bring her in. Have her do an inside turn, perfect. And look how she she came, she was cantering, she did an inside turn, she faced me and she automatically relaxed, put her head down, cocked her leg, and just instantly relaxed. That was perfect. She thinks about going here, but I was really impressed with that. Like, nope, get a little pressure for doing something I didn't want. Let her hang out here. She's like, oh, should I go to the left? Oh, no. Should I go to the right? No. <laughs> the answer is where there's no pressure. She's standing here and facing me. Send her off. The opposite way she was thinking at the time. <laughs> she overreacted just a bit to that. <laughs> I was like, nope, nope. Bump on her. Keep asking. Keep asking. Doesn't matter what she's doing. There we go. I'm not going to stop asking just because she did rear a little bit. Like, that doesn't bother me. That's what horses do. So, she's just like, nope, that's not what I want. <laughs> I was like, well, it doesn't matter. I just bump on her. I'm like, nope. And I'm aiming my stick toward her shoulder. There we go. That's the only part of her um, lunging besides the pulling at a canter and the little fast canter that I don't really like. <laughs> She'll do that with turns be like, oh, well, I'm just going to go this way. And I'm like, no. So I just need to redirect her and eventually that'll just go away. Here's a faster canter, which she's pulling again toward the gate. So I'll pull her back and send her the other way. It's just really important that you make them do an inside turn every time they pull on you. Because then eventually they'll be like, oh, I start to pull, I, start, I end up going the opposite way. That's basis for all the riding. Like once you get under saddle and they they decide they want to turn left on their own, you turn them right, and then eventually they'll be balanced right in the middle of your reins. And that starts here on the ground. <laughs> so I went to the sensitizer and she just kind of lost it here. Which is a perfect example of why you need to desensitize during lunging, during a sensitizing lesson. And it didn't take her long. She lost it at first and she's like, oh yeah, if I just stand still and relax, it'll go away. So that's why it's so important when you're lunging, go into sensitize. Don't just lunge and lunge and lunge because all that was still in there. So I was really like, that can be annoying because you're like, oh, she doesn't do that usually. But then she, um, she relaxed so quickly after that whole running around thing. She just came back so fast. It was really nice. Like, nope, we're not going on. And sometimes I have to be a little harsh on her. Like I bump her a little hard, but that's just gonna get her attention and be like, oh yeah. If I just gently am like, oh, please come back. Like she's not going to learn the lesson. Where I'm a little bit firmer is where she knows what she should be doing already and she's not. So I, it's not like I'm teaching her this for the first time and she's not getting it. She already knows she's not supposed to be doing this. And I still don't beat on her. I'm just a little, little bit more um, strong with my cues. So I'm going to start nice and simple here, just kind of brush the um, stuff off my arms, shake my stick a little bit. She's a little wound up from the cantering and the running around she just did. I want her to bring her back down, balance her back out. There we go. She's relaxing, she's going her head, looking at her lips, has her hind leg cocked. Perfect. her to go. And there she does it again. She's like, nope, I think I want to go this way. <laughs> I don't really know why she's doing a little rear thing. It's really strange. She doesn't, it's like she's just like putting in too much effort. Like, you don't need to 
jump up and turn the other way, but I just ignore it and eventually it'll go away. So we'll go in there and desensitize her again, and she's like, oh my goodness. Let's make sure that, there you go. It's not gonna eat you, you're fine. She's got that big flinch there. She's not paying attention, have her pay attention. There we go. See her thinking about it, things in this lesson so much that's why I liked it so much because you can see she's running around she's trying different things and then she comes and relaxes and, and instantly comes back to me and it's like oh yeah I remember this I should just stand still so it was really cool to see that process with her so again I'll just have this place be a nice place she's thinking about going away oh yep she changed her mind right away perfect She's a bit more wound up. She's trying a lot faster, but I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just not going to let her do too many laps that time. One or two laps max. 